What's your experience of life been like? I don't want this to be like another YouTube video that you kind of watch and you don't engage with. I want you to kind of reflect and think, even if you don't comment and you don't talk to anyone about it, but just kind of think and reflect like, what's your life experience been like? What's your life's kind of story? And just looking back at things, you can kind of become nostalgic and kind of come to some realizations. And then you can kind of see life in like this big picture view rather than like your narrow minded view that you're in right now. So I'm gonna go through my kind of story and my experience of life. I was first born and I have three younger siblings. Um, growing up, I was <laughs> pretty naughty when I was very young. I would do things like, um, <laughs> one time I locked myself in my bedroom with my brother and we just painted ourselves and underneath our beds and that sort of thing. And then other times we would like grab a Nutella jar and like hide somewhere and then eat the Nutella and just get into little trouble and do little things like that, you know, just being naughty. Um, my family upbringing was kind of, kind of strict. You know, there was like, go to bed at a certain time, do the chores, do these sorts of things, but it wasn't really regimented and, and it wasn't super disciplined. And growing up in primary school, I kind of just got by. I didn't mind doing things. I liked kind of history. I loved reading. I loved getting absorbed into stories and kind of getting lost in those kind of worlds. Um, I liked listening to music and putting on kind of music. And I, I was kind of forced to do like after school activities, like nippers I really hated. And that's like, if you don't know what that is, that's like going to the beach and like learning how to swim and um, go out in the ocean and that sort of thing. And I kind of had a bad um, relationship with the ocean because it was, it was kind of scary for me. It was like out of control, you know, like there was these big waves that really scared me. I didn't know how to deal with it. I hated being in the water and not knowing where, where anything was. And if there was a shark or like a stingray swimming underneath me or just fish or something. And that scared me, so I, I really hated it. And then being forced to do it made me not like it much at, at all. Um, I had a young age, I did Taekwondo and I kind of enjoyed that, but then that didn't go on anymore, so I couldn't do that. I did dancing and I did enjoy that. I did it with one of my good friends, my childhood friend. And, and then going into high school, um, so in primary school, I was I was a bit emotional at times and I was seeing a psychologist although at the time I didn't realise it. I just thought it was this lady that I played Uno with. And I guess my experience at home wasn't, wasn't the best, you know. Like, at times my parents would be fighting and, you know, I sometimes got punished for doing the wrong thing, you know, like pepper or salt in my mouth or getting a smack and that sort of thing. And... To me, this kind of seems normal, but now I realize like as a kid that can kind of affect you and have like an impact on your life and kind of realize that, oh, like maybe I'm not that good of a person. Maybe I need to be quiet and do what they say so then I don't get punished. And when you're young, your parents are kind of like, they're your protectors, they're your kind of, they're who you look after. And if they're not happy with you, then you kind of feel bad. And I did feel bad. and. That's why I loved reading because I could just lock myself in, in my room and just read and I'd get lost in a story less than someone else's world and it would and it was the only thing that really calmed me down and helped me. But anyway, going into kind of high school, I didn't really have much expectations. I just kind of thought, oh, it'd be so cool doing high school, look at all these big kids, you know, it'll be kind of exciting. And maybe I'll get like a girlfriend, you know, like when I'm 16 or something, and then after that I'll just go on and then I didn't really have much of a plan of what my future would be when I was like 12. But that's kind of what I thought it would be like. And then in high school, um, I got class captain, which was not really surprising because I was kind of like, I wasn't really popular, but I was kind of more talkative and more friendly when I was that age. And that's because I had less kind of blockage and less, you know, things that you just accumulate that just kind of hold you back from who you are. And it was kind of nice, you know, I had, I had a few friends, made some new friends, did some 
did some stupid things, you know, I had one bad kind of influential friend, you know, he was a good person, but, you know, we got into some bad stuff. And then, you know, my parents kind of found out and then I cried in front of them because they just felt so ashamed. And then that was kind of like a turning point for me where I felt like I had to be stoic and I had to be reserved and I had to just hold myself up and just kind of be a man from then on. And I had been given quite a bit of responsibility from my parents, you know, take care of taking care of my siblings and that sort of thing that often leave me to in charge and being too young and not knowing how to deal with them. I just keep telling them to shut up. And of course they wouldn't listen. And then it would just frustrate me. But, um, I've talked about my, in my biggest regret of my teenage years, I met a girl that had a big impact on my life when I was in year seven, when I was in first going to high school. And yeah, just watch that if you want to, if you want to know about that, because I'm just going to go over like my kind of high school experience. I was starting to get into soccer more and I had more soccer friends, but then going into year eight, I had a knee injury and I couldn't play soccer, but I would still kind of do it anyway. And I wasn't, <laughs> I, as I said, I was kind of had a strict upbringing, but it wasn't very disciplined or kind of regimented. And I didn't really do my homework. I didn't really do much. I had a really messy room. So I didn't do anything to kind of help my knee. I didn't do any of the physio exercises very often. And I would just keep going back and then and trying to play soccer and then hurting it even more. And then it took me like a year to get over that. And during that time, it was kind of tough. And I tried other hobbies. I tried photography and that's when I got my first job and bought my camera, my first camera. And <laughs> I did play around with YouTube when I was around this age and a bit earlier, but I kind of got put off because I was so anxious because other people would see it and you know people that I know I was so worried like oh what are they going to think of me you know what are they going to say and now that I've done it now that I'm doing it it's kind of gone away and I have a bit more peace and I can enjoy it a bit more and realize like this is who I am I shouldn't be afraid to be who I am and anyway so during high school I wasn't really I didn't really have a high self-esteem and after year eight, I really wanted to get homeschooled and kind of just focus on soccer. Even though I still had my knee injury, I kind of just was like, I really don't like school. I'm not vibing with it. I don't like it. But <laughs> I saw the the classes for the next year and I saw that that girl was going to be in the same class as me. And just some part of me knew that I had to go back to school because I was going to see her and we were going to end up talking again. And I didn't want to lose that. <laughs> I'm not sure if I regret this or not. I think it's kind of good that I went through school and that I experienced that anyway. Even though nothing came from it. I did learn a bit more about myself. And, you know, going into year nine, I was still kind of quiet and didn't really do my homework. just kind of got by. I didn't really like math, so I was starting to really avoid it. And then the year after, oh no, that year we had a Japanese exchange student come over and that was really nice because he was such a kind, great person. And it was really nice to have him in that time where I felt bad. And then I had chicken pox as well that year. And that really sucked because I got it really bad and chicken pox really sucks. And then going back to school with all those spots on your faces and the pox marks and people just staring at you like you have the plague or something. Oh my God, it just felt so bad. And like, I didn't really have many male friends during school because I didn't really connect with them much. And some of them would kind of tease me, nothing really bad, but most of my friends were kind of girls because I found it easier to get along with them. They were kind of more mature and I found it fun just to be like, because they're a bit more humorous and a bit more like playful like that. And whereas guys were kind of like, kind of serious and like trying to act all tough and that. and. I guess a part of that kind of put me off. And then year 10 kind of went by, you know, just did school. Nothing really major happened apart from me. <laughs> Nothing really major happened, but I went and exchanged to France for two months at the end of the year. 
that was a big experience for me because this was 2019 to 2020. And I really realized how anxious and how worried I was around people and how much it affected me. And to be honest, I didn't have the best family for my, for me. We didn't go out that much and I spent way too much time indoors, kind of just sheltered. And I didn't eat a lot because I was very anxious and I actually dropped to about 50 kilos. And at that time, how old was I? About 16. So I didn't have, I was probably about five, nine, five, ten at that point. And I was very small until I was like 16, 17. And then I had a big growth spurt. And now I'm five foot 11, which is like, all right, but it's like not six foot, but I don't really mind. Cause I'm like, I'm like a nice height. I kind of like my height. I've never really been worried about it or anything. <laughs> oh my God. That just made me think I haven't been worried about my height, but I've been worried about my PP. That's in my video. That's talking about penises. If you want to kind of see that, but anyway, coming back from France, we were going to sell our home. And I was kind of excited because we we're going to move into a new home. You know, things seemed like they were going to move forward. I was going into year 11. But um, when I got home a couple of weeks after I got home from France and kind of started to adjust to the lifestyle, my parents split up. And part of me, I was kind of shocked by the news, but I wasn't surprised. And I guess my way of kind of dealing with that, I didn't really cry for a while. I just kind of tried to take it on and just use humor to kind of get through it. You know, when I was dealing with my family, I just try and be funny and just say jokes and just avoid anything serious because I didn't want to face it. And then COVID hit because it was 2020. So I had like a three hit punch, three, three hit knockout or whatever you want to call it. And that sucked because I was already kind of drifting apart from my friend group and kind of just becoming more introverted and insular. But I was still doing soccer and that was kind of something that was keeping me kind of active and with people. And then I was also doing this high performance training program at school, which I kind of enjoyed. And then after first quarantine happened, I was in Australia. I can't remember how long it lasted, probably a couple months. I, I realized that I really hated school and that I wasn't doing any work and I wasn't doing any homework. I was just avoiding it and kind of just, you know, watching a lot of YouTube, trying to find meaning, trying to do all these things. I watched a lot of movies. I was masturbating quite frequently and watching porn and just feeling really bad about myself and my life, which of course was kind of natural, but I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it. And that just made me feel even more alone and kind of really, down and then we kind of came back for a while and year 11 this girl um she kind of told me she grabbed my arm and she said something like nobody would like you like this or like a girl won't like you if you're like this and she was feeling my arm and feeling like my the bone of my elbow sticking out and it kind of stuck with me it didn't really hurt me because I already had low self-esteem and didn't have that big of an opinion of myself, but it kind of stuck with me and I realized maybe I should gain a bit of muscle. Maybe I should be a bit stronger so then I'm a bit more attractive to girls. And I was doing high performance training and I kind of liked like pushing myself in that kind of sense, but I hadn't really done a lot of push-ups or body weight stuff. And so I started to kind of do that, but it didn't really stick. And then when quarantine happened again, I decided all right, I got to actually do something to make myself feel a bit better about my life. And I kind of started lifting weights, but I didn't have any weights at home and there was no gyms open. So <laughs> I used body weight stuff and I did, I had water containers and I filled them up with the water and I'd use them as weights. And I just play around with it. I didn't really know what I was doing. And they were probably, I think they're about 10 kilos, the water containers that I was using. And they weren't even like, half full when I first started and I remember just doing bicep curls with them and kind of trying out all these kind of exercises you know like lateral raises and like I just do all these kind of exercises just randomly and just kind of experiment with it and I had a bucket that I'd use as like a bench if I wanted to do bench press or like something like that 
<laughs> and then I kind of continued with that and I kind of enjoyed it so I stuck with it and then soccer kind of came back and I didn't really I didn't do it as much because it kind of affected my soccer but then also I wanted to train more for soccer and I did at the end of the year when soccer season was over I did end up saving up to buy a pair of dumbbells that I still have today adjustable dumbbells that I still have today four years later and a bench that broke unfortunately and that caused me bench trauma now because whenever I lay back on a bench you know like I was laying back on it when I was trying to do a bench press and it went boom and I hit my head and that just like scared me and kind of gave me a bit of trauma and it took me like a couple of years to get over that and now I have this solid bench that I just love it's kind of weird just how much I just love my bench I know it sounds weird but I just love it and I kind of stuck with working out even though I was doing a fair bit of soccer which kind of was detrimental I was trying to do too much and I didn't really gain a lot of muscle because I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't eating well and I didn't realize that I had to eat well to gain muscle and that I had to eat in a calorie surplus and have more protein and that sort of thing and then you know school ended and I was kind of like, oh, what am I going to do? I kind of felt lost for ages. It felt so weird adjusting to adult life. And then I just worked. I did soccer. I did some music. And I tried to get my life together as much as I could. But I kept falling back and falling back. And I didn't know why. And then at the end of the year, I decided that I wanted to move out. Because I just had enough of kind of being with my family in that environment, you know. And I wanted to gain some independence. I was going to move to Melbourne where some of my friends were. And then I couldn't really get a place because I and because I didn't have enough money and I wasn't working enough to have it. I didn't have enough saved. So I thought, oh, maybe if I go to uni, then I'll be able to easily get a, an apartment or something there, which actually kind of ironically turned out to lead me to wanting to go to a different place. So I was going to go to Melbourne, but instead I went to Wollongong, which is just south of Sydney, and. I wanted to do the soccer program there so I spent pretty much all my savings on that just living up there for a while and I knew no one up there and I thought oh this will kind of be a step towards my soccer career and then everything's going to kind of work out and it's going to be so great and it did not turn out like that and I really struggled but luckily I did have a friend that I kind of called off and that would help me that I had met through soccer and he was kind of into this kind of deeper philosophy kind of stuff and he kind of got me onto Alan Watson and Krishnamurti, who, you know, kind of talk about like the bigger picture of life rather than these strict kind of self healthy ways that are just like set. And it kind of made me realize and question because I was also studying philosophy, which was really opening up my mind and making me question my identity and all the things that I was doing and where it was leading. And I realized that my life wasn't headed in a good direction, so I had to move back home to kind of reassess. And it took some while to kind of beat the bad habits. I was binge eating, I was spending most of my time indoors, um, watching movies, playing video games, masturbating, watching porn, just, I felt so bad. And of course I did, because I was doing those things and really losing respect with myself. And it took a while for those things to kind of, for me to kind of beat them off and kind of find clarity and kind of create this YouTube channel and then come to where I am now, where I'm taking care of myself a lot better. Um, enjoying working on philosophy um, in a play that's going to be showing in June that I'm excited about and I'm with a friend from soccer and that and my life seems to be going a lot better now and yeah I guess I just kind of wanted to share my experience where I've come from so then maybe some people can relate to it because that's what I needed when I was down and I was watching a YouTube video I wanted to see someone else who had felt similar things to me and that had got through it so comment any stories or ideas that you've had if you want to you know i'd appreciate listening and hearing from you thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video